Welcome back to the Anarchy Analysis Series, where we have 15 predictions to get us over the halfway stage of the LEC regular split here in winter. Week 2 is upon us, but before we get into these predictions, we've got the results from last week to go over. And oh boy, the competition is a close one. Let's start with the results from day 1. We got 4 out of 5. Bot surprisingly got a nice juicy 3 out of 5, only dropping the SK in the Fnatic game. It's unlike me, who only dropped the Fnatic game. Day 2, another perfect 4 out of 5 for me, dropping the SK game. Whereas the bot picked that game up, but only got the Koi game as well. So it realistically is sitting on 5 points. And finally, day 3, we got 3. We dropped the Heretics and the Mad Lads game. Whereas the bot did exactly the same, except it picked up the Mad Lad game, as well as dropping the Koi and Heretics game. As such, we're sitting at 11. The bot is sitting at 8. We're in a very close competition where three games sit between us. But the good thing for me is I've got the advantage of seeing results. The bot's just got a coin flip and that coin flip is going to be tested as we enter game one of week two. So there's a big elephant in the room this weekend and that is two teams 3-0 after one weekend. Of which one is G2, which everyone expected. The other is Vitality, which I don't think many expected at all considering they faced off against Fnatic and Mad in their opening weekend. Now Vitality as a team are coming in against an Astralis who struggled week one, I'm, I'll be brutally honest. Their drafts as a whole are kind of like BDS's, they seem a little limited and that's unfortunate shall we say with the current meta. being. A very expansive, pick-heavy mess, I would say. The LCK is seeing Caitlyn support. I know this is a one-off because it's Carrier, but there's these wacky picks that are coming out from even Caps in Europe if we want to go for that. I feel Jonghoon is a little limited in what he can play. It's either Lux. Bard or Pike. That's what I think he's found success on in the LEC. And if he doesn't get that, I definitely think he's going to resort to a Leona or a Khan. Nothing like the Lulus or the Karmas that are currently cropping up in the support role across the world, let's be honest. I mean, it's probably being played in the LCS right now, and I know the LCS is kicked off right now. I, you can tell when I'm recording. But, um, Vitality, on the other hand, we need to talk about them. Bo is come in being just this crazy level 2 jungler. And he's finding plays and getting kills for his team that's just setting up perks to carry. Perks has come in like old Perks back when he was mid laner for G2 and is actually performing extremely well and he's being facilitated quite a bit and that's allowing him to get his team head and perform very very nicely. Something you can't say for Astralis but yeah. My prediction is, if you can't tell, a Vitality win. The bot is already going rogue and gone Astralis. So yeah, you're gonna see this bot has gone whack for this weekend. And I cannot wait to see if any of his games get predicted correct. But yeah, Vitality win is my opening prediction. Game two coming into this week, if I was uh, predicting it pre-season, I would have gone with Fnatic wiping the floor easily with BDS. However, both teams have the exact same record of 1 and 3, 
and BDS picked up a win against a struggling SK. Fnatic picked up a win against a Koi who misplayed. Now, I'm going to be honest. Surprisingly, Fnatic are underperforming. And you would have said at the beginning of the split, they would beat BDS quite easily. Adam, he would not get revenge against his former team. And now, looking at this one, I think Fnatic should win. And the reason I think they should win is because of the limit on Adam's pool being quite small, let's be honest. He only plays about three champions, which is sad to say, considering the amount of good picks right now, and he only plays three champs. Eh, it's kind of bad. Now, personally, Fnatic, they should be lucky to have BDS as their first opponent this week, because it gives them a second like get back into things it builds up the weekend a bit easier for them considering the rest of the week they've got arguably two very tough opponents for them now personally i think bds will put up a good fight against fanatic but i'm still not hot on bds after week one and I've not been hot on BDS since they joined the LEC. And that's purely because what have they shown us as a team in terms of growth? It's realistically nothing. And now, I think if you're going to try and challenge the tops of the league, you need to show some strength here in week two. Because... The road's not going to get any easier, especially with their second game this week being against a team contesting the 7th, 8th spot like they are. But yeah, unlike the bot, I've gone with Fnatic. How that's gone for BDS, I don't know. But yeah, let's get into game number three. Koi versus Heretics is our third game of the day, and we're going to have a nice talk about the mid lane. Larson versus Ruby is what I want to focus on. And the reason I want to focus on this is Ruby stepped up very well against Astralis. He's coming in here against Larson. And this is where I think we're going to see a bit of a brawl to see if Ruby can be considered a top mid laner. Larson is very good at testing his opponents, being consistent in lane and being very hard to kill. He's a very hard player to deal with because he just makes lane unplayable for you. And that's where I think Koi will find an advantage. And you then have to think, okay, how do you stop Larson from being dominant? Oh, that's easy. Have a gank come in from your laners. Mercer and Yankos, I think is starting to form around Ruby. He honestly in his opening game felt facilitated for by Mercer. Mercer making crucial rooms to keep his mid laner safe. And that's something Yankos didn't really do. He was um getting caught out, so he was the unsafe player in <laughs> Heretics' weekend. Which which personally I had high hopes for them during week one. I gave them literally two predictions and I got one game correct for Heretics. I expected Yankos to come in and try to decimate his opponents and be the figure that gets his team ahead. But it is instead Ebi who is leading this team. Without a doubt, the best performing top laner in week one, and he was solo boloing pretty much everyone he faced. And now, going up against Koi, Shigenda's gonna have to do a lot, considering the fact that Ebi has been dominant on Kasante. In fact, I think both players have favored 
the new top lane pick and as a whole should either one get this champ it's going to be a bloodbath unless the other can counter them and that's where i think shigenda has a bit more of an advantage is we know he can play other picks Evi hasn't been tested yet in his pool and even so he's only won one game that means that koi could without a doubt just pull out an easy win here i do think koi will win i do however think it'll be a long drawn out win considering heretics probably will pick a bit more scaling into this koi roster who also favor scaling believe it or not however the one difference i feel that scaling is not going to be uh looked at is that bot lane i think heretics of bot lane will be tested here and personally i think comp and trimby this will be their weekend they wake up and actually pick up some victories that are key to getting them top two bear in mind you need top two if you want to secure a favorable matchup in the actual playoffs and that's where i think we'll see what i think here is where we'll see koi start to pick up their tempo for being regular split dominant if you want to know something, I am not hyped on SK at all this split after week 1. After what could be described as an underperforming week where they were gifted a win by Heretics that I don't think SK deserved, they managed to pull out the bag, I'm not hyped at all. The only thing I'm hyped about with SK is buying their jersey, that's it. That's the only thing that's good about in this split. They've got the best jersey. That's sad to say. As a whole, I think this weekend is very hard for them, considering they're facing Koi, <laughs> Vitality, and G2. Yikes. That's basically going to cement them in 10th or 9th if Astralis lose all their games. It's basically going to come down to the last weekend for SK as they need to face Astralis day one, game one as well. That is tough as well for them. Basically, they need to win that if they want to stay, I think, in the top eight, which they realistically need. But yeah, let's discuss this game. It's them versus G2. It's tough. G2 had a fire week one over performing exceeding expectations even styling on competitions with a zach mid like caps he's been quiet this opening weekend and he got one game of zach mid where he popped off that's it so he is performing exceptionally well and I think G2 may have, it's a sad thing to say, a very strong, possibly 8-0, uh, I, I can't say 9-0 split, but it's on the tables and could be interesting once we get to the last game of that weekend. But I think G2 as a whole will out move SK on the map that they just seem quicker to move to objectives take control of the map and just outperform the opposition everywhere yike has been a key contributor to the success of this G2 roster and people thought would he be just another EU rookie that underperforms like when was the last time a rookie f came out of DRLs and overperformed. I think it would have to be El Yoya. El Yoya. I can't say his name. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it properly. But El Yoya honestly was 
the best performing rookie for a long time. And he's in the same role as Yike. So, you know it's going to be interesting when G2 face off against Mad. Literally, the last week, it's the match of the week for week three. And that's probably where the focus is going to lie on that mi uh, jungle matchup. But we aren't there yet. G2SK is just going to be G2 dominant. And that's personally why I think G2 will win this. Same with the bot. It agrees with me. Woo! XL Mad rounds out day number one. And a lot of intrigue is on this matchup. Because Mad, performing as expected, doing quite well for themselves. And as a whole, are doing as expected. XL, people expected them to be a super team. They had what could be arguably a super bad week one, only picking up one win against a team everyone expected them to win. They struggled against G2. Early game suppression was put on them in that bot lane. Patrick was not able to perform with Targamas and it was a bit inconsistent throughout the rest of the week. It wasn't until their last game where they beat a struggling, dwindling BDS that they got some success out of week one. Maybe that's enough for them to reset into week two, is ending a weekend on a high. However, I don't think it will be enough to beat Mad. Mad came out swinging in Wheaton 1, where their only loss was against the other undefeated team that isn't named G2. And personally, Mad, they're looking quite good. They're solid. I think Hilly has fit into their playstyle quite well, obviously having prior experience with certain members of that team has benefited him. And as a whole, Mad Synergy is doing good. I wasn't expecting the bot lane to look as crisp and clean as they did. But Kazi's aggression is being matched by Hilly's, and it's making a very dominant bot lane that is not that easy to deal with. And that's why I've got eyes on their matchup against Koi on day two because it's two bot lanes that need to show up and I want to see show up. Yes, I've pushed past this XL matchup and yeah, you can tell I've kind of predicted Mad here, but weekend games, like, I, I mean, week Day one, that's the word I'm looking for. Day one games like this for Mad are a great tune-up for day two. And personally, XL, Patrick and Targamas need to kind of synergize a bit more if they are to beat Mad. That's where I think this XL bot lane, well, that's the XL struggling area is the bottom half of the map. And Mad's stronger half of the map so far this split is the bottom half. It doesn't take too many brain cells to understand the fact that Mad have a stronger lane than XL and are more likely to win. So yeah, that's where my prediction is heading to a Mad win. Day 2 is kind of going to be our fast forward day as day 3 features our match of the week. So let's get through this BDS versus Astralis. I've gone with Astralis in what could be a bottom of the table clash to get into the second round. Vitality SK is game 2, I've gone with Vitality. Heretics versus G2, Yankos versus his former team, I've gone with G2 winning that one. Matt Coy. I've not gone with Mad, I've gone with Koi. And XL versus Fnatic, I've gone with XL. Shock. But yeah, look at the bot, very similar in terms of our predictions. Not. Only the last two games though. Okay, 
I think XL have probably the roughest uh, <laughs> draw in terms of how their games fall. It seems to me they usually have two top teams in their opening two days, and then day three, it they're fed an easier opponent. And it's what happened day in week one. They faced uh, X, uh, G2 and then Koi. And then they faced Heretics, which isn't too easy of a matchup. And then day two, uh, week two, I keep getting them mixed up. Week two, they faced Mad and then Fnatic, which, uh, again, two top teams. And then they get fed Astralis for an easy win. You can, I'm not going to spend much time explaining why I think Excel's matches are very yikes. Because, again, Vitality and Heretics, in terms of their matchups in week three, and then they get a nice juicy SK to round out that weekend. It's very intriguing how XL's draw has worked out for them. And Astralis, I think, may give them a bit of a contest, but personally, I think you've definitely got to give it to XL. Day 3's second game is going to be Mad vs BDS. I'm going to be honest, I've said it already, I'm not hot on BDS, so clearly I'm going mad for my prediction. And I think the best way to describe this matchup is it's going to be El Yoya trying to find some form. I think he's going to be very dominant in this matchup, and he's been quite quiet during the first opening week. He hasn't felt the need to show a lot of skill yet, but going up against Shio, a very hungry jungler who did perform quite well in his opening games, I still think Aoyoya will show why he was considered the top jungler. And that's something he needs to do here, similarly to what he will have done on next weekend, where he's got probably one of the toughest weeks ahead of him and for Mad. Anyway, their schedule is very brutal. But BDS here should be a nice, like, round out the weekend. It's one of them games you think, I don't need to practice for this one. I'll just prepare for the other two teams that we face. That's how I feel about this uh, BDS roster. But yeah, let's move into our third game of day number three. So, let's get into a matchup where I don't feel any excitement coming from it. SK versus Koi is the third game of day three. And Koi, I've predicted to win. It's not a surprise I would do that. Looking at how these two teams have played, I think SK are very heavily underperforming. Personally, looking at Irrelevant as a whole, this is the player I'd expect to be winning on very high carry oriented picks. He's only got his only win is on Camille this split. A carry heavy pick. Naran Kasante, you can argue are carries, but they're not as big of a carry as Camille. Get this man on a Fiora or a Jax. And I think we'll see irrelevant performing in a very dominant position. Going up against Shigenda, a player I think is in a similar sort of role as irrelevant and I think this will be where SK either put up or show up uh, shut up personally Koi are a very difficult opponent for them but if I don't see any like Vavavoon or expression from this roster in this game then Chances are, my week three predictions for this team are in the gutter. Plain and simple, I do not think SK, if they continue the form they're currently in, 
will make it into any of the second rounds during the split. And yes, you can obviously say, well, they can bring in different players. Sure, you can. But I realistically think if you are to contest any team, you need some fire. You need some strength, and this team hasn't shown me anything. They've genuinely been probably the most boring team to watch this split. And as a whole, they're down with Astralis in terms of bad performance. And that's saying something. But yeah, let's move into our last game, well, last two games, of which I personally think are a lot more interesting than this one. Matchup of the week happens on day number three, where Vitality take on G2. This is going to be a banger of a matchup as both teams so far are sitting on the perfect 3-0 and they've honestly looked impressive. Of the two teams, I would say G2 is slightly more impressive. However, you've got to look at the inexperienced players on these two teams when it comes to LEC action. It's going to be Bo versus Yike as our feature length matchup for this one as the crazy pathing of these two junglers has kind of lit up early game plays for these teams that ballooned them into a lead. The thing about G2 this year so far is they've been playing heavily for that bot lane and Hans and Mickey have stepped up considerably whereas Vitality have kind of revolved around their bot lane in a more controlled fashion, shall we say. But you've got Kaiser controlling the lane, making it hard for the opposition, and then Perks being the top performer in the league, I feel, in the mid lane so far. It's a return to dominance for him, and the rest of his team is benefiting from his playstyle. As for G2 as a whole, we could probably see a Broken Blade carry in this game due to how the two teams match up. I feel that's probably the biggest lane advantage that one side has is that top side of the map where Photon, I'm not saying has underperformed, but he he's performed... What's the word I'm looking for? Efficiently. Not slacking in his role. And realistically speaking, is holding his own against some of the greats. That being said, what is my prediction? Well, traditionally I would stick with G2 with every single prediction because they're just EU dominance. However, I've gone with Vitality for this one, and this is just my head saying, why not? What's stopping Vitality from being a super team? Sure, past iterations of this team were touted as super teams. Last year, for example, when you have the top god Alfari perks, you also have Kazi and Lebrov, and then who did- and then Haru in the jungle and then they had someone previously but Haru being a former world champion as well this roster sounded top tier on paper but it underperformed this year this roster for vitality they've spent the big bucks and got a roster that just seems dominant and that's realistically what EU needs is another top team to contest the likes of the G2s, the Fnatics who are kind of underperforming right now. But realistically speaking, I want this Vitality team to win. And I think the bot does too, considering they went with it. But yeah, a strong match of the week for us this week as we head into our last game of week two. And finally, 
Heretics versus Fnatic rounds out week number two. Let's be honest, this could be a very big banger of a brawl between two teams who I feel are very even at the current stages of the league. Fnatic arguably are underperforming. Yes, we've only got a small sample size over the same weekend and very little practice to adapt to opposition but that's the thing about this season the splits are put in three very compact weeks and that means that you have to learn to adapt to play your best games every game best of one split over 10 9 10 weeks meant that you got time to adjust to opposition now you're having to adapt on the fly and if either team fails to adapt then chances are they're gonna fall and looking at this matchup honestly it could go either way i know that's my touted phrase for this season but heretics as a whole no one expected like super powered strength teams like from this team they expected them to be middling of the pack because they pulled like the outcasts from each team at plus ebby who is without a doubt probably the ljl's best player in their history due to how long he's been in that league but now he's over here and according to super fantasy was the best performing top laner last weekend so if that's not a statement then i think this game is going to be intriguing because of wonder versus ebby wonder i feel is one of the players on fanatic that is consistently performing at the level expected of him I would say other parts of the map are underperforming. I'd say the bot lane hasn't adjusted to the LEC just yet. I feel Reckless, while is picking up kills and having carry performances, he just gets focused quite heavily by opposition. And with how Rooks has played drafts, like his champ pool, I don't think suits the current meta. The enchanters aren't realistically his playstyle. It's the more engaged picks, the likes of the Rakans coming through for him. And that just puts this team at a disadvantage. And with a change of patch only coming after the regular season ends, I think this team might struggle to make playoffs. And that's why I've gone with Heretics winning this one. I think this team just has got a better meta read than Fnatic. Yes, Fnatic beat Koi. And Heretics haven't played Koi yet. They actually play them first day of this weekend. Which, if you can't tell, I'm predicting in a completely different order to uh, what's as scheduled. But... As a whole, I think Fnatic will struggle, as will Heretics, and this probably is a best of three matchup we end up seeing after week three. But Heretics as a whole, I think it's going to be a bit of a top gap in a sense that Ebby will be gifted an advantage. He will transition that down to help Ruby, who I think has performed quite well for this Heretics squad. And that, as paired alongside Mercer, should grant Heretics to win. And with that win, we can actually end out this episode. Thank you very much for joining me if you have enjoyed all 15 predictions. I know I talk quite a lot about League. Leave a like down below subscribe if you're new and if you want to sunday you will get the team fight breakdown between xl and koi live on stream 
And with that, I see you guys then. Peace out.